Well, I guess uh, if I were to write a, just a little mini biography of Minnie, the first thing I would say was, she's a natural born artist if God ever made one. She doesn't think about it too long. She doesn't agonize over it. She just knocks it out. And her instincts, it's right on the money. I was born and raised in Ellet County, Kentucky, and I still live here after 82 years. I started whittling and creating slingshots, pop guns, and bow and arrows when I was about 10 years old. If you look at Minnie's artwork, I think you can see a lot of her childhood in it. I asked her once how she got started carving, and she said, well, I was about five years old and I didn't have any toys to play with and I wanted some. In some way, I knew that if I had a knife, I could make myself some things to play with. She had a favorite uncle who came and she would beg him to borrow his knife. And He said, now, Minnie, if you cut yourself, you know I'm gonna be in big trouble. But he would give it to her and she'd slip off to the barn and before long, she could make anything she wanted because uh, she just had that gift, and so the first thing she ever made were toys for herself. If I had to describe my title as folk artist or outsider art or whatever, I like to be known as a wood carver. I use bass wood to whittle with. It's a very soft wood. Some people call it lin wood, and it whittles very easy. She does it so fast, it's almost like watching somebody sketch. You can see that fox or bear just come out of that block of wood. The energy feeds on itself. You know, she got, she got such a good response for the work uh, from other people, and that, that, you know, that, that feeds us all. Uh, that kind of um, uh, back and forth that you get when you make things that people respond to. Well, if I get an order for 12 roosters, I used to go to the woods and get me 12 sticks. But now I hire this young man to go and get them for me. And then I know that I'm to make 12 roosters. So then I uh, saw them down to what size I want them to be. Well, I just need a sharp knife to, you know, start making something. And I cannot sharpen a knife. I've been at this down through the years, but I cannot sharpen a knife and I have to get somebody to sharpen my knives. Some people say they can look at a piece of wood and it speaks to them and tells them what it wants to become. I've whittled all my life, but if I picked up a piece of wood and it started talking to me, well, that would scare me real bad. <laughs> so I just pick up a piece of wood and decide what I want to make with it and what I want it to look like, and I try as hard as I can to do that. There's a quality about Minnie's work. If wood could be magnetic, hers is magnetic. I've seen people at shows that have a lot of work and they'll walk in, kind of scan the scene and they'll see her things and they just go to them. There's something appealing that reaches out to you. Because they're humorous, I think there's a sort of instant uh, joyous thing that comes over a lot of people when they see, see her work. That's the, the first impression, I think. You know, you get a little deeper into it, you can figure out that there are things that she's uh, speaking to that come out of her immediate ex experience. If I had to describe Minnie's work just in a short phrase, I would say it's alive. I would just think of what animal, a bear or a tiger or whatever, and I'd make something to look as near like it as I thought I could. Oh, I think some of them come out of her life experience. A lot of it's having grown up in a very rural, isolated county, having grown up with animals around her, that kind of thing. I think that has a lot to do with the, the imagery she picks up. The funniest piece I've ever created, or I think it's real funny, uh, Art and Craft Foundation in Louisville asked me to make a different piece that nobody had seen, so I made this purple creature, and I give him yellow teeth, and put pawpaw seeds in his mouth that looked like roaches, and I called him a roach terminator. The children's books, Mike Norris, he gave me a cassette tape of this bright blue rooster, it was called, and I couldn't get it out of my mind, so I made a bright blue rooster and sent back to him. Then he 
uh, called me and said, well, if you'll make the characters to match all of that, we'll put it into a children's book. And I thought that was fun. Then we made the Sonny the Monkey book. I made 1,500 cartoons for Sonny the Monkey and Bright Blue Rooster. We was working on Mommy Goose Rhymes from the Mountains. So the Mommy Goose book has caught on really, really big. And, and I'm proud of each one of them, but my favorite is the Bright Blue Rooster. The pieces that she's made for the book, the one that's special for me is Mommy Goose. When, she, when we started doing that, I had some ideas of sort of a traditional Mommy Goose with a bonnet on and maybe a, a, a bag, a, more, more like a goose. And I asked Minnie before we started the book, I said, did you want me to send you some sketches or some pictures of geese or anything like that? And she said, no. She said, I, I'll just, let me just come up with my own. But she also does biblical scenes like a Noah's Ark and a Daniel in the lion's den and a Garden of Eden. And when you look at those, I get a very strong sense of reverence. So whatever she does, I, the, when you do art, you know, the, the, the range of human emotions are from laughter and humor to reverence and, and even sadness. And I think Minnie's work covers all of that. I whittle also a little woman supposed to be in it's a self-portrait of me and they have become as popular as my animals are and i make red top and black breeches and blue shoes the reason for the red shirt and the black breeches and the blue shoes that is the first one i made that's what it had on she paints she, do, she designs quilts. She's not just about wood carving, although that's her primary medium, but it's certainly not the only one. She's very, very positive. I think she's generous. She's always looking for something that she can do for somebody else. I don't think that many would be content if she weren't creating. I want them to be happy. Folk art is art from the heart and it's to make people happy and if they enjoy my work a lot of people enjoys it and a lot of people don't like it you know but that's the reason we have all these different artists and so for somebody to buy something from me and then send me a card back how they enjoy it and a picture of where they've set it in their home you know that is really a uplift to me to know they enjoy what i do